mini modular moments. Hello and welcome to another mini modular moment. In the last episode, I was building a sequence using two separate sequences of different lengths, adding them together using a precision adder to make a longer, more interesting sequence. In this episode, I'm going to build on that, but I am simplifying the clocking. I'm going to apply some logic and I'm going to make it a whole lot funkier. The big change is that Pamela's pro workout is now doing way more than just clocking. The first change I've made is that I'm now using Pamela's pro workout to convert my eight step sequencer into a seven step sequencer rather than the dope for clock divider. I didn't think this was possible, but I did get a comment on my previous video that suggested it might be. So I had a deeper dive into Pamela's pro workout and worked out that you can actually do this. And this is how it is done. Out of output five of Pam's Pro Workout, I am sending 16th notes to my trigger input on my Bastel Popcorn, my eight step sequencer. I don't want it to do eight steps. I want it to reset every seven steps. So I am then using another output of Pam's to achieve this. If you change the modifier on Pam's Pro Workout to divide by seven, it's not going to take into account that we want to divide by seven on the 16th notes. So we need to retain this times by four. And the way to do this is to select a Euclidean rhythm within the menu system. So what I have here is a seven step Euclidean rhythm with a trigger just being on the first step. So that means it will do a divide by seven, but in reference to the times by four modifier. So if I just set Pam's going, you will see on the sequencer that it is now resetting on the seventh step. It was also suggested to me that I could make a more complex sequence by combining my seven step reset with say a four bar reset using the cross op function of Pamela's Pro Workout and using the or logic function. Now I had no idea what cross op was nor what or was it. Those are the kind of things that I run away from because I thought they're far too complicated. But I thought now was a good time to have a look at it and it's really rather clever. Or means if that happens, or this happens, send a trigger. And if both happen at the same time, also send a trigger. So looking at my example, I would have a seven step reset on PAMS and a 32 reset on PAMS. And with the cross op function, it will look at both of those and if one of them is sending a reset or the other, then it will send that reset. And if both of them happen at the same time, it will also send that reset. So basically my sequences are going to reset every 7, 14, 21, 28, 32, then 35, because that's seven times five. If I've done my times tables right this time, 42, etc. I have on output seven, a four times modifier. And for this one, I have a Euclidean rhythm of 32 steps with one trigger on the first step. So every 32 steps or eight bars, it's going to send a trigger. And I am sending that directly into the first step of my Bukla Tip Top five step sequencer so that that will reset every 32 steps. And then on channel six, which I will just demonstrate, I'm going to use the cross op function. So if I go into the menu system, I can select this to say I want the or logic function. And that is going to combine this channel number six with channel number seven because I've selected output seven and that will mean that coming from output six it will reset every seven steps but it will also reset on the 32nd step 
So that's how I can combine the two reset triggers. And then that's going into my reset on the Bastel popcorn. So if I just demonstrate that and I will add in the five step sequencer on my precision adder as well. So if you look at the five step sequencer, you will soon see it reset to one. And on the Bastel popcorn, you can see this resetting. I am now using the 4MS Ensemble Oscillator as my sound source. It's one of my favourite oscillators and we are going to modulate it. I am using the Bootlet Tip Top Source of Uncertainty to create some modulation. On here, there is a sample and hold. It takes a noise source and there's internal noise on the source of uncertainty. So I have patched that in and it needs a pulse in uh, to work. So I'm just taking that from my PAMS Pro Workout clock. And then these sample and holds here uh, alternative versions of this one. So this CV out is the main CV out sample and hold, which produces a sample each time the pulse changes. On these alternate ones, it's every other one. So I just thought I'll patch them alternate because then we can have alternate modulation, which may make it a bit more interesting. I don't know. So this is going into the twist knob and the warp just to make it a bit funkier. I added it at a slower speed so that you could hopefully follow the sequences and see the resets but this is it a bit faster and a bit funkier. We are celebrating this week as we have hit 2,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for all your support. And if you haven't subscribed yet and have enjoyed this video, do think about hitting that subscribe button. It really does help grow the channel. Thanks to all the neighbours who've just been on. Looking for an Amazon parcel, a black top with silver sparkly bits in. You're not seeing it. Hey, I thought you were serious then. <laughs> This was a Christmas present. I haven't stolen it off the neighbors. <laughs> if you haven't yet seen my previous video on this method of sequencing, then why not check it out here?